Back in 1988, Hollywood had a writer's strike. With Star Trek V on hold, William Shatner doodled. Then it became more doodles, followed by a full-on novel called Tech War. He originally wanted to blend T.J. Hooker and Star Trek. Tech War spanned nine novels. It took place in the 22nd century, featuring a police officer named Jake Cardigan. He was framed by one of the city's tech lords. Think system lords in Stargate. He was set up in killing his partners while on tech. A narcotic that's half chemical and microchip. When interfaced in VR gear, you'd see your fantasies, a loved one, a location. The tech would slowly rot your brain. With all evidence pointing to Cardigan, he was sentenced to cryo-freeze for 15 years. William Shatner eventually pitched the book series as a movie slash TV show. One of the biggest issues getting it off the ground, it was set in the 22nd century and the show takes place in a lot of outdoor locations. So Shatner had to retool the series to be just 50 years in the future, roughly 2045. Other than that, the series stayed pretty faithful to the books. Tech War is a blend of Blade Runner, that ad infested future with lethal weapon and cop friends sticking together and dealing with all the crap in the world. Four years later, Cardigan was released from his prison early for unknown reasons, given a second chance at proving he didn't murder his partners and to find out a string of cover-ups from Sonny, the main tech lord. There's a lot of familiar actors in the series. Jake's a family man, married or was married. He has a son, he was 11 when he got thrown into cryosleep and with all the evidence pointing to him, his family vanished, only leaving him some money and their old home. They disappeared and changed their names. So the first thing Jake does when he gets out, tries to find them. Everyone hates him, the world's changed around him. While the show didn't have that much money, they did get to do some impressive CG work of the time. The world's fascination with VR was at full force here, but was handled better than a lot of those corny movies on it. I was also happy Tech War, while evil and torn with crime and drugs, it didn't go full grunge future like Blade Runner. It kept itself bright and lively. It gave that visual cue of when you stepped foot into the good and bad. With no choice, Jake was forced to use his old friends to find out where his family was. We get to meet the show's hackers, Cowgirl and Wildside, two professionals able to break into any system. Both should be familiar to Earth Final Conflict Andromeda fans. Andromeda herself and Augur. They attempt to break into records, everything goes to hell, Kalgoral and Wildside almost get killed, but get saved from some outside help. Jake barely gets any time to see his son, only to see he hates him. Every which way the world kept screwing him over, all for the drug tech. And what does he do? Goes and buys it and falls into his misery seeing a fake image of his wife. I like that he went here, Jake didn't come off as this perfect human, can't be manipulated, can't do the wrong thing, he'll take any advantage he can get, and also let everything go. He does have a limit and falls for manipulations. Luckily, Sid, his last surviving partner, stopped him. Sid is the only person who stuck to Jake. Never believed one second he murdered his friends, but when he saw him take tech here, it almost convinced him. But Sid was sent by the same people who rescued the hackers, Cosmos, a detective agency run by a man called Bascom, played by none other than William Shatner. Bascom is a bit of a mystery. He's a good man, upholds the law, but he has ulterior motives when it comes to the city and stopping out crimes. He doesn't like telling you the whole mission. He leaves it up to his investigators to create the case. It's a proving ground to see who's worthy to be at his company. Sid left the force for Cosmos after everyone turned on Jake. He's been trying to find out who really killed his partners and why, but without anyone at the crime scene, there was no way to prove anything. The thing I liked about the series is how everyone just speaks how they feel. No BS being friendly or hiding behind words. Sid's the best at it. When Jake screws up, he lets him have it. When Bascom pisses everyone off, Sid tells him. He doesn't let certain things prevent him from doing his duty, like when Bascom gave Jake a trial run at Cosmos, they were to meet some whistleblower in the park. Once he'd do this job, Bascom would then help clear Jake's name while he didn't tell him that this random case did link up to his framing. Before the woman could talk, she was attacked. Well, not really attacked, more ambushed by an android that self-destructed and blew her up, disguised as a flower girl. Sid realized it and shot her, but Jake paused because she looked like a flower girl. Tech War is a nice mystery story on top. Sometimes they lead you down one direction, kill off a character, and then we find out something else. She wasn't the real informant, that was her android. A game in a game in a game 
freaking stacking dolls. So how does this all fit in with Jake? The case he was doing when his partners were killed was trying to bust Sonny, one of the biggest tech lords the city has. Sonny caught on to this, so he created this situation to make the police look bad so that people wouldn't trust them and lose that chance to pin Sonny. If you can't trust Cardigan, the good guy, who can you trust? This distraction over the four years allowed Sonny to get a hold of a scientist who he paid to create a crystal that could destroy and eliminate tech. But that's crazy when he's selling tech, but his goal is to make his own version of tech that's immune to the doctor's anti-tech crystal, getting all the money. Sonny betrays any and everyone. He toys with you, manipulates you. You just want this guy dead. This is why Von Flores is always cast as a bad guy. He does it so good. With the doctor dead and still no proof, Jake found out the doctor had a daughter, Beth Kittredge, who went missing, attempting to find her father. But a level 10 Android copy of her was found at his lab. She held all the information about the crystal and Sonny's true intent. She's the most advanced android Jake's seen, being almost human. Stargate Atlantis fans will find it amusing with how Tori Higginson's character ended up in that series. Beth becomes Jake's unofficial second partner. She wants to find out what happened to the real Kittredge. She's presumed dead, protecting Jake as they go along. She formed a bond with him, thanks to her getting the real Beth's memories. She was secretly hiding during Jake's frame and was the one who stopped him dying from ODing on tech. Android Beth sadly dies, saving his life from an android that looked like his son trying to blow him up. Don't worry, the show didn't lose Beth. The real Beth was found alive, helps bust Sunny, and she ends up working with Cardigan at Cosmos. Three other movies were made, Tech Lords, Tech Lab, and Tech Justice, showcasing how far the Tech Lords span across the world, Sunny's long dead sister being a computer virus that tries to destroy the Cyber Matrix, and one last appearance of Sunny where he tries to pin Jake on the murder of his ex-wife's husband. The movies are considered season one by fans, while the main series is considered season two. A few things and actors are changed between the movies and series. They had to scale things back. It didn't really interfere with the show. Jake, Sid, Beth, and Bascom all return for the series. Bascom more in a reduced role showing up in key important episodes. Season two introduced us to Sam Houston, Jake's second official partner at Cosmos. Wildside does not return to the series, but Cowgirl does. Wildside gets replaced with a new character called Spaz. Season two focuses more on the aftermath of the first Tech War movie, and even though Jake was cleared of his crimes, a lot of people still believe he did it. Jake also suffers from nightmares caused by prolonged cryo freeze. Tech War had a bit of a mixed bag when it was on. Some people loved it, some hated it. It stemmed from the dialogue. It was corny at times. It felt like the 1980s when it was written. Uh, lots of people in the 90s wanted to get away from the 80s, seeing it as a time where things were dumb or over the top. So people didn't treat Tech War as a serious cop show. They would say things like, we're in the future, your home can tell you that your wife left to pick something up, but crime is still a problem. Funny when looking at those old reviews now, we have things like Echo that can do those things, and we still have crime. I think a lot of the complaints of the time were not justified. The show did have some corny cliche lines, but it wasn't filled with it. The series took it safe and simple. They didn't have a lot of money to work with. The show was not Star Trek. They used the future setting as much as they could. You get computer programs continuing operations of tech lords that are dead, kids murdering people thanks to a VR game being hacked. Another episode dealt with the cryo prisons being infected with a virus, letting everyone out. The series did eliminate tech lords little by little, but they never brought back Sonny. I think it was the right call. If you play him out too much, he end up being a Apophis from Stargate. Sid and Sam are fine. I think they both could have used more screen time, more fleshing out, if the series could have gone on longer, rotating between the two. The cast was pretty large. It was tricky putting everyone in a situation. Human Beth, being a doctor, wouldn't always get a chance in episodes. The only thing that never gets fully resolved is Bascom. He's always acting weird, pushing buttons from behind. He'll do things that endanger Jake and the others. You get pissed off at him a ton. But the series comes full circle in the finale where Jake is brainwashed by his therapist, who they thought was helping him with his nightmares. He had hypnotic suggestions planted into his head where he was used to kill targets. And then one of the people assigned to find out who was leaking Cosmos information, he was the one who was actually doing it. Even Bascom was convinced that Jake was doing all this. The man has been betrayed 
so many times through the series. It's a miracle that he trusts anyone. So the only way to break Jake free of it was Bascom put his life on the line and convinced Jake he knew he was being used. Bascom finally showed his emotions. Even he admits he wasn't acting human for a long time. I think if the show had gotten a second season, Bascom would have lightened up. The problem with Tech War, I don't know if Tech War would have worked better if it was released today. Like, no matter what, it's going to be viewed as a Blade Runner copy. It has its own style, own characters, I liked it. The characters were a tight group, everyone had pros and cons. It's just more of the same. Does William Shatner steal the show? Bascom, he's a main, but Jake is the lead. They never had a problem. William Shatner did his job behind the scenes. For what they did with Tech War, I think it was enough. It had a satisfying ending to Jake's arc. Besides the issues I had with the other characters, the world was fun. It was an interesting take on VR, the cyber world, cyberpunk. It could have gone on for another year, wrap up the whole Tech Wars, but I was satisfied through and through. Check the series out, especially if you really love Blade Runner or the actors that appear in the series. Seeing Lexa Doe be a southern cyber hacker is quite fun. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of me. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on a lookout for obscured stuff.